Okay, so this is just a quick uh, overview of the periodic table project that you guys are going to be doing in class. You'll be doing most of this work on your own outside of class. We will spend some time in class like we are today and probably one or two more days in class working on this, but the majority of it will be on your own. The uh, end product will be a poster or online product, and I will leave that up to you. Uh, if you want to do it online or as a poster that you would bring in. But the basic idea is this, and some of this will become more familiar as we take the notes on the periodic table project, or the periodic table itself, which is the next chapter. But the periodic table, which is this whole thing, was built based on a couple of different properties or groups of properties. The first thing is that within each column going up and down, the elements have properties that are similar. So these are families, they call them, or groups of elements that are similar in terms of how they react with things or don't react with things. Uh, and there are trends, which is the other part of this, that as you go across each row, things, certain things happen. And then also as you go down within each group, certain things happen. So there's an overall trend, and this is the one I want you to focus on for the project, um, where as you go from the top left down to the bottom right, things get bigger in general. There are some exceptions to that, but in general, as you go from the top left to the bottom right, things get bigger. And they get bigger going across, and they get bigger going down to the bottom. So that's the, the key thing in terms of some sort of measurement that you're going to use for your elements. Now, you still want to have groups or categories that go up and down, but within each group, so if we look at this group, say, for example, within each group, things have to get bigger as you go down. And then as you go from one group over to the next, you want to get um, bigger from left to right. And if you do that, if you have each group get bigger from top to bottom, and then organize the groups so that the smallest overall group is on the left and the biggest overall group is on the right, what you'll end up with is that general overall trend where the top left is the smallest and the bottom right is the biggest. Okay, that's your goal. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be exactly lined up the way you want it. But if you put each group in the right order and then put the groups themselves ordered from left to right, you should end up with the general trend that you want. Now, the topic is going to be something that you choose. So you have to think, keep in mind a couple of things. You have to have a topic with a minimum of 25 elements. That's the smallest table you can make, 25, for this project. You can make more, but you can have it. You have to have at least 25. And you have to be able to break it into five categories, and you have to be able to measure your elements somehow. There's lots of different ways. I'm going to show you some examples of how that works. But um, you have to be able to group them into five categories and rank them somehow. And it's not just like these are the ones I like the best. They have to have some sort of measurement that you can use to rank them. So here are just a couple of examples to give you some ideas. These are by no means the most you have. I have lots more in my room that you can look at at some point. But these were just to get you started. Here is a periodic table of sports balls. So there's 25 balls. They're organized in terms of uh, groups, okay, by how they're made more or less. These are all plastic. The next ones are hollow. Then there's odd shapes, stitched covers, and solid. So those are the five groups going up and down. So every one in the first category is plastic. Every one in the second category is hollow. And then within each group, if you look, as you go down, they get heavier. They, they did the measurement by weight. So within each group, this is the heaviest. Uh, sorry, that's the lightest, and the one at the bottom is the heaviest of the hollow ones, or the plastic-covered ones. This is the lightest and this is the heaviest of the solid ones and the groups are ordered so that they get bigger as you go across so this is the smallest one or the lightest one and the bowling ball is the heaviest one in between there's a little bit of mixing but the general trend is that it goes from the top left to the bottom right smallest to biggest that's the idea um, another example things that go fast okay and um, the categories are down at the bottom here Right? Humans, the fastest humans, fastest animals, cars, trains, planes. And then within each group, 
they did it, and this is actually kind of uh, upside down because you always want the biggest ones to be at the bottom, or in this case, the fastest ones. Um, so this is the fastest person. This is the fastest uh, aircraft. Uh, and then in between, again, it gets bigger as you go across. Uh, animals are faster than humans. Cars are faster than animals. Trains faster than planes. Uh, sorry, than cars. And planes are faster than trains. So you can see it gets bigger going from left to right. Um, they got it backwards a little bit in terms of top to bottom, but the same basic idea. Other ideas, very common one would be Disney movies. Um, and these are organized in terms of sales. Now this one, what they didn't really do um, as clearly was mark the categories. That's important. Now I think they are in categories. If you look, um, these are all animal movies. These are all um, the, the princess movies. These are all non-humans, um, but not necessarily animals. And then you have some other ones over here. I think these were all based on books. Um, and these are just other ones in general. Um, although, actually, no, these are all holiday-related. So they did it in box office from left to right and from top to bottom so that this is the lowest box office, this is the highest box office uh, of the group. Now, highest ones of all time, not necessarily, but of the 25 they picked, that's the way they organized it. Uh, you can do specific things like a particular TV show and the characters, uh, or foods. There's lots of different ways to do food. This is all pasta, organized roughly by shape and size. Okay, going down, um, they get bigger. Going across, they get bigger. Okay, so those are all different things. People do sports, they do uh, movies, music, any colleges, um, just books, just about anything you can think of, as long as you can think of a way to creatively organize it. Again, these were all posters that I took pictures of. Um, you can do it online. People have sent me their final product online, and that's fine. Um, but the end result is that you're going to create a table. Does it have to look like the actual periodic table? No, absolutely not. I don't expect that it will. Um, first of all, you're not going to have 120 things. Second of all, that sort of um, unusual shape that looks a little bit like a, a skyline or something, you're not, you don't have to have that. It can be a perfect square, 5 by 5 That's totally fine. Um, topics are up to you. Start thinking about it. Start researching it. Uh, we can talk about it in class as well. Uh, but these are the ideas just to get you started. And then you have uh, the, sorry, the final project will be due the last class before winter break. So either that Thursday or Friday, the week before um, winter break is when the project is due. We will take some time peri uh, periodically, sorry, um, in the next couple of weeks in class, but the majority of it will be done outside of class as you put your poster together. There you go.